Okay, I'll, yeah, I'll just I'll, I'll take care of it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I don't have a microphone, so if I'm not loud enough for people at the back, just let me know. And I'm also a little bit unrehearsed, <laughs> um, but I'll, I'll do my best because uh, I really like this topic and I think that uh, it, it might be helpful for other people. Oh, cool. This actually worked. Um, all right, so we'll, we'll try this later on. Um, okay, so uh, I, understand, I understand that we have like half React web people, half React native people, and then some guests. Is that right? Yes. Something, right. something around, around that. Um, so uh, there's not a lot of knowledge that I uh, can assume, but I assume that most of everyone here has used React before, but maybe hasn't dived into the internals of React. Um, I have made a couple PRs and uh, done a little bit of uh, digging into it, but I can't claim to be an expert myself. Uh, but I think that every one of those talks that we talked about earlier um, is me just digging into the philosophy and just like uh, just making it into a talk as I go along, and so far, like this, so far, this is the most the most in depth one. And uh, when when we're talking about possible topics, I think this is the one that I'm I'm most excited about right now because uh, it re it really demystifies the framework if you can build it by yourself in 130 lines of code, um, and that's the promise that I, that I'm <laughs> making to you today. So we're gonna build concurrent React from scratch, and and the other the other thing is that React actually in the past two three years has. Um, changed paradigms completely from the stack reconciler to concurrent mode. Uh, it was completely invisible to you under the hood because you just kept writing the same components. But now with the release of concurrent mode and suspense and time slicing, um, you, you, get, you start to see the effects of it. Um, so, it's better, so, it's, so it's now it's actually the time to start digging into like why, what the mental model is and, and why, um, why it's important. OK, so we're going to talk a little bit uh, about a few different topics, uh, React Fiber, uh, link list traversal, render versus commit. We're also going to clone a use state hook. That's just one of the hooks. Obviously, there's there's a lot more other hooks, but once you've done one, you can do, you can do a lot more. Uh, we're going to talk about what the work loop is, um, time slicing and suspense. Um, just to get a sense, because I you know I, I don't I don't come here normally. Like what? Um, how many people like have actually looked into React Fiber? Like seen Andrew Clark's Andrew Clark's repo and all that. If, has anyone looked into React Fiber? Okay, so completely new. Okay, good. Um, <laughs> uh, good. This is your best. This is the best intro in the world right now because it is the most accessible. I, I'm not. I'm not like trying to howl in. Like um, a lot of people, like they get too in depth, right? And they they are no, they are no longer able to explain to common people like us um, what React Fiber is. And I think if you want to do it, you need more accessible steps to get to that that point. Um, so I just want to give some shout outs. Uh, I did not figure this out on my own. Uh, most of this work comes from Rodrigo Pombo. That's the guy on the top right. Uh, he wrote this project, Build Your Own React. He's been working on this for three years. Um, and it's a simple step-by-step -step clone. But it's a very, very faithful clone. Uh, and it takes a few, quite a few hours to, to understand it. So in order to, to dial it down, I have to incorporate some other, other, other ideas. Uh, in the middle, that's Andrew Clark from the React core team. Uh, and that's Lynn Clark at the bottom, who, who gave the first big talk about React Fiber. Uh, and I recommend all, all of their, their work. Uh, to, to understand if you want to go deeper. Um, we'll start off with what a JSX element is. Um, everyone knows, uh, should know what a JSX element is. It's a plain old JavaScript object. It's just an object. It has two primary keys. There's actually a, a couple more, but those are the two primary ones, uh, type and props. Um, and it looks like this, right? Like you, this is very, very not alien to everyone here. Like you have, a, you have an object, you have a type, you have a props, and inside of them you have a, a text child called uh, Hello World. Um, obviously, we don't want to write all that all day long, so we have a helper function called react.createElement, right? Um, and obviously, we, it's a very short step from there to JSX, um, which is what we know and love. Okay, so that's a JSX element. Um, how do we flesh that out into a fiber? It really is a JSX element plus a whole bunch of stuff, right? So um, stuff in red is, you know, stuff in red are, uh, you know, unique properties like a link to a, to a, to a virtual DOM element. Uh, hooks and uh, uh, effects for like the kind of work that you want to do. We'll, we'll talk about this. We won't talk about this today, but you can ask me about it afterwards. The white stuff is linked list, so it's every fiber represents a node in your app, and it links to another fiber, and it links to another fiber, and it's it's bidirectionally links. In, in, it's more than bidirectional. It links to its own parent. It links to its, its immediate first child, and it links to its own siblings. So 
that data structure contains all the links you can possibly want for, to, to go up and down your, 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 your app stack. I hope that's quite obvious um, after I explain it. Okay, so, uh, so let's write it. Um, <laughs> this is the part I should have, uh, okay. Da, da, da. Da, da, da. Okay, I already, um, let's see. Okay, and sorry, let, let me just get, uh, do some prep for this because it's not super prepared. Okay, so um, right now what I want, and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to resolve to do it bigger so it's e easier to see on screen. Uh, last time I, I did this, I did it too, way too small and o only the front row could see, so that was really bad. Um, so what I have here is a, is a project. Um, it only has index.html, it has Babel installed. That's all, that's the on, those are the only dependencies I have, just Babel. Uh, and it's got an index.html pointing to, with a root, and it pointing to the source of that root over here. Ah, okay, I should not navigate randomly. Ah, <laughs> sorry. I don't know why I'm nervous, I've done this before. Okay, so, and the only thing, the only thing I have here is uh, styles.css. Okay, that's just producing this very nice animated background. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set up the, the, the globals that, every, that we're all gonna draw upon for, uh, for, this, for this project. So uh, that's the basic setup. Uh, I have a utils file. Let me show the utils file quickly. Um, where's the utils file? Uh, it's not, sh it's not toggling out in one second. I think I may need to fork this. Uh, just give me one second. Ah, it's not going too well. Fork sandbox. Okay. Fork your own sandbox. That makes sense. Um, all right. Okay. So, uh, so we have a, so we have a utils folder and this folder um, only has about 130 lines of helper code, um, right? And it's just, it's just um, it has simple things like reconcile children, create elements, create text element, and create, create element you might expect is just the helper function that creates types and props, and that's exactly like you expect. Uh, create text element, create DOM, commit deletion, update DOM. So just 120 lines, I'm not extracting away much, um, but I'm just importing them into, into this app. And then I'm, I'm declaring a bunch of variables that we're gonna use, so next unit of work, the current root fiber, the work in progress root, and we'll talk about toggling between the current root and the work in progress root and how that works. Uh, the deletions, uh, work in progress fiber, and hook index. Um, all of these, all these are, we're, not, we're, we're gonna gloss over a little bit. Um, and then we'll have, we'll, have a, uh, we'll have a variable here called React, and, and that will be an object that has all the properties that we expect out of the normal React um, methods. Okay, <laughs> why am I so nervous? Um, so, so that's the, that's the basic setup. Um, and now, now we'll, we'll write our first fiber, right? So, um, I've, I've written, I've written a, a simple fiber over here. Um, and what that is, oh man. Um, okay. I have, why do, why do I have a random host component thing over here? Okay. Hang on. I think I need to comment this out. Uh, I think I, I think I um, pasted the wrong thing over here. I mean, uh, working progress. Okay, so this is like this is the structure of a basic fiber, but we don't need any of this. So I'm just gonna comment it out. All right. So like like I said, a, a fiber is is basically that same JSX element, but with all the other uh, relevant tag stuff. Um, we don't really need that. So I, you know what? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna explain that uh, the fiber is not something that we need over here, and. And so, and so, we, so I'm going to set up a work in progress root fiber. So this, so this has a link to uh, two things. So a, a document get element by ID. So this is a real DOM node. And I'm going to stick it on the DOM property of the work in progress root fiber. Uh, and then I'm going to have a JSX element, and I'm going to stick that as the first child, first child of that um, of the element. And then, uh, and, and this is these are just like reminders to self that these are all links to other fibers that, that you could have in future that is in the data structure of a fiber, but you don't really need it right now. So, so bare minimum fiber looks exactly like a JSX element. Makes sense. Okay, let's get something to show up on screen. So here, over here, I'm using JSX to, to display um, hello world. Uh, let's actually try and render it. So I have a function for a simple render. 
And a simple render function uh, basically does this. Uh, it takes, takes an element and a container. Um, and it, based on whatever ele uh, element type, uh, it creates those DOM nodes using the DOM APIs. Uh, it goes through every single property and then you know, attaches it to, to that uh, DOM as an attribute or a prop. Um, and then it renders it out and appends child to the container. Right? These are, this is all standard vanilla JavaScript that you would write yourself if you were making an app. Uh, and so part of, the framework, part of the framework is to extract this away from you. Right? Now I have a render function, and I can render whatever I like uh, from an H1 um, to like a div with a maybe like a UL in there. Uh, it'll, be, it'll become more relevant why I'm doing this later on. <laughs> uh, Shopee. Is it 1P or 2P? It's 1P. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> I'm learning, okay, I'm learning. I'm sure, I'm sure Ronaldo doesn't know that <laughs> it's 1P or 2P. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so, <laughs> so uh, hopefully everything is super, super clear. I want to go slow in this beginning part because I lost people last time, right? So I really want to, like, we have a work in progress root fiber. That, so we have this JSX element, right? We stick it in a work, work in progress root fiber, which contains, the, contains, contains this as a prop and this, this container. Then we pass it into a render function that says uh, we, we render the element uh, and the container itself. And that's, that's all sh showing up on screen there. Very, very clear, right? Okay, so, <clears throat> uh, and so that's that's the that's the base part that that we have to that we have to start talking about. What is rendering in React? Um, and I'm gonna I'm just mostly gonna stay in this mode so that I can quickly toggle back and forth. Um, so a very naive way of rendering. Right now, what we're doing is we're starting at the top of this div, and then we're saying let's render everything all in one shot, right? That's fine if the app is small. Uh, and let's see what let's see what happens um, as we go along. So this is render and commit. Okay, uh, not, not an official term, but I think it's a very, very easy, it's much, much easier to explain in contrast to what I'm about to explain afterwards. So render and commit. We start at the root, and we do work, and then we save it to a DOM. So those are the emojis that I chose, right? Work and save. Then we go to the div, we do work, we have, the, we have that render, rendering function worked out, and then we save it to the DOM immediately. Work, save. Work, save. And at this point, if I come along um, as, a, as a user, well, I might, I might, there's a chance I may see um, what this is. I mean, there's different uh, terms for this. You can call it inconsistent state, uh, or you can call it tearing if, you're, if you borrow the game development uh, analogy. Uh, but basically, half the, you know, half the app is updated and half the app is not, right? Um, so it, that's not a good experience for, for your users. Um, anyway, let's keep going. Uh, do, ah, do work and save, do work and save. And then once you're done, uh, and, and, that's, and that's that's commit and render, right? Uh, every single step you commit and render along the way. Um, so obviously you can do a little bit better. Um, and the way that React has done this for a long time, it's not it's not even anything to do, to do with concurrent React. Um, it's a render then commit um, sort of mental model. So the way you want to think about it is that uh, we have that we have that work function and, we, and it's attached to the work in progress root fiber. Um, by the way, I, in, in my code, I'm going to call this perform unit of work, but that doesn't, don't, don't, really, don't really worry about that. And we're going to follow this traversal algorithm, right? So you go from the div uh, down to the first child. We do the work. We're not saving. We're not committing to the DOM. Then we keep doing the work. We're not saving. We're not committing to the DOM. Um, do the work. Do the work. Uh, and and this, this algorithm is, is, is very much prescribed. This is the linked list traversal algorithm in React. Uh, we'll, I have a link to, for you to learn more about it later. So if there's a first child, you go to the first child. Uh, if there's no first child, then you go to a sibling. Uh, if there's no, you know, and then, and, then, and then from the sibling, if there's a first child, go to the first child. If there's a sibling, you go to the sibling. And then if no child, no sibling, you recurse all the way back up. Does that make sense? So that's a, sing, uh, that's a, that's a very sort of deterministic way of, of traversing your entire app. Um, and the whole, the whole idea is that uh, we'll do all the work in one, in, in one shot, right, but not commit it. And once, only once we've done all the rendering work, which is running your code, like your you know, like set state, whatever, um, once, we've done that, once we've done that code, then we transfer it over to the current root and commit it to the DOM. Yeah? So in that, in that sense, you have a very clean cut, cut over from like, um, old state to new state and no tearing in between. For React, that is very, very essential. And if, in fact, that's a, that a core pr um, primitive, a core uh, goal of concurrent React and time slicing in particular. 
Um, okay, so uh, if you want to learn more about traversal, uh, uh, Sebastian Mark, Mark Berger, like he actually wrote about this three years ago, um, uh, just like in sketching out what the fiber uh, architecture looks like. So if you go to the React repo and look for issue seven nine four two, you can look, you can find it there. Okay, so that's that's uh, that's linked list traversal. Um, we don't even need to really do any. Uh, okay, so 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 we have a simple render, but this does, this rendering does. Uh, does the rendering work, right? And then it also commits at the end. This append child is the committing, and it does it per node. So we need to refactor this a bit to, to actually do a more realistic render. So from this simple render, I'm going to kick out the render, um, and then I'm going to use a, do a more complex render. Uh, and I call this the fiber render in my, in my <laughs> work. It's a little bit more, it's a little bit more work, but um, if I reduce it to this, it's, it makes a little bit more sense. OK, so, um, so we're going to perform unit of work. Uh, so, so this is the, the core of it. We're going to start off with a, a, an object called next unit of work. We're going to, at, at the beginning, we'll sign it at the root. Like, we, we start at the root, right? And then while there is a next unit of work, we'll just infinite loop until it's done. OK, so next unit of work. Then we have this function called perform unit of work. It does, uh, it, performs that, it performs the rendering function on that next unit of work, which is currently the work in progress root. But it returns the next node, right? And then you assign it, and then you perform it again on itself, and it, and it, just, and it just loops all the way through until you loop through the entire um, app, like, like we talked about. Then you commit the work. So these, that's encapsulated in these two uh, functions over here, which I'm purpose, purposefully sort of including for, for you. But just to uh, show a little bit, um, it does the reconciled uh, children work uh, that, is, that I've imported from my utility library. Uh, that's the rough idea. I really want to stay high level, right? Because uh, this is a lot to, to get through in a single talk. Um, and then we also do the commit work thing. And remember, we only do a commit work at the end. Uh, commit work basically just does the uh, append child, update DOM, or delete child uh, function, functionality. So within this 78 line piece, we already have something more or less, uh, more or less working. Um, I, think I, I think I should comment this out. Yeah, so, so I always want to show you like, at what point do we have working code? At what point do we have partially broken code? Um, so, like at every step of this point is a, is a workable framework, but it adds more and more features. What's the, what's the feature that we've added? We've added nothing, actually. We just evolved our rendering function to split it up into, in, that, in that order that we talked about earlier. Uh, render, then commit. Whew. OK, so uh, an app that just does this, not very helpful. Um, we, need, we need some interactivity. Uh, so, so, that, so then we'll, we'll introduce this concept of a work loop. And when I, when I was first talk, uh, told about this, uh, I was very shocked because you're supposed to avoid infinite loops um, in your code, uh, but <laughs> surprise, there's an infinite loop in, in React, uh, and that's the work loop. And, that, and it's similar to basically any operating system, any uh, game engine, that there is an infinite loop somewhere in there that's driving everything. That's, what a frame, that's a really the core of the framework, which is like you register all these callbacks, and then the, the game loop just decides when to call your callbacks, right? So, that, so that's, the, that's the rough principle for why uh, do a work loop. And, and the reason why we need one is because this, is, this work is only done once. You start at the work in progress route, do all this, commit to, commit to the DOM, and then that's it. You need to loop it again, right? Um, so I'm going to delete this and uh, show you the, wor the, the work loop code. Um, and so this is the work loop code over here. Uh, I, hope this is, I hope this is right. <laughs> uh, let me see. Work loop, work loop. I think I need to call it. Uh, did I did I put it in myself? Okay, so um, request idle callback work loop. So it's not running right now. I don't don't really know why, but um, I think I, I did remove the render. Do I no? I mean, I had I don't I haven't implemented. I removed the simple render function, um, but I haven't. Uh, I haven't introduced it yet, just yet. Okay, don't um, don't worry about it because I, I'll I'll probably um, I'll probably uh, reformat this in in a bit. Wait. Uh, okay. I sorry. I, I can't. Yeah. Render is not defined. Why is render? Where do I use render? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I can clear console. Um, let me just refresh this. Ah, live coding fail. <laughs> Um, okay, so this. Uh, okay, if anyone spots anything, you have a, you get a gold star. 
So is there somewhere you should use? Yeah. I should probably use the current root. That's right. No, actually, no. Uh, it's it's unused. Um, Okay, uh, don't don't worry about it. I I I'll I'll fig I'm sure I'll figure it out later on. Um, but the, the main thing I wanted to talk to you about is um, is that is that okay? Sorry, that, that really threw me for a loop because that's supposed to be working code. Um, the main thing I want to talk to you about is this work loop, right? Um, what what have we done? We we took that same loop of like do do work and then iterate through the entire app, um, and then and then commit the work. We took that same loop and then we stuck it inside this function and then we did this recursive thing. So we call it one time. And then, and then at the end of the function call, we call ourselves again a second time. So that's the infinite loop there. Uh, we're using this unfamiliar API called request idle callback. Most people will not have used it. Uh, just think of it as set timeout with a slightly different API. Um, so over here, the internet is very slow. <laughs> um, OK, fine. Oh. Uh, this is called state tearing. It should not render. Uh, yeah, I should be on Autopia's internet. Um, Shopee A. Yeah. OK. I, I don't know. Um, anyway, doesn't matter. Um, this thing of it is a set timeout. And the, 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 main thing, the main thing that it gives you is uh, a deadline. So for example, if you're trying to render 60 frames per second, every second is 1,000 milliseconds. 1,000 divided by 60 is 16.6 .6 milliseconds. So in that 16.6 window, 16 .6 millisecond window, you have the ability to do as much work as, as you can. And the goal is to use that to yield back to the, the browser so that they can take in other inputs like uh, clicks and type, typing and all that. So your app feels more responsive. Unfortunately, right now, we have this infinite loop. Uh, we have this like, non-stop loop, right? It just says while, and then blam, just goes through the entire app. So we need to break it out a little bit. So let's, let's implement time slicing. So we'll, say, uh, we'll, we'll have a simple little Boolean called should yield, um, and we'll, we'll say false. Uh, and then we'll take this deadline. Uh, API and we'll just say like deadline dot time remaining uh, less than less than one. So uh, deadline dot time remaining is is the is the DOM API's uh, way of telling you like how much time do you have left before I need I need I need it back so that I can do my browser stuff. Um, so we'll just we'll just say if it's less than if it's less than one we will say it should we should, we say we should yield. Uh, if it's more than one you can keep doing your work. So let's implement this should yield. Uh, basically you, while Next, well, next you know work is truthy and uh, should yield is false, uh, something like that. And that's a that's a very simple implementation of time slicing. There's a question over there. No, uh, I think the next unit of work is assigned to work progressive. That's why Yeah, you think you think I did that? There's a chance. Yay! Yay. Well done, gold star. Gold star. Um, basically, what happened was my uh, I actually so I've given this talk before and I had the presentation. It worked on it went fine the, the last time, but then my hard drive crashed, um, so I had to recreate recreate all the copy pasting stuff today. Uh, so yeah, sorry, <laughs> but good catch. Um, yeah, and in fact, we'll we'll take this uh, we'll take this fact later on to do the to do the hook stuff, um, because the whole idea is that you have this infinite loop and. Whenever you want to do work, just pop it onto the, the thing called next you know work, and uh, the, the, the rendering engine will take care of it for you, right? Because we have this infinite loop, it's constantly checking if next you know work is truthy, right? OK, so that's good. Uh, and, now, and so now we've implemented time slicing. And this is not theoretical. Like, this is a real, real thing in your app right now. Uh, if, you switch, if you switch to concurrent mode, uh, there's, there's, a, there's a strong possibility that uh, you'll, see some, you'll see some more uh, sort of interactivity because of the time slicing. So in a, uh, so this is this is an image from Andrew Clark where he was, show, he was showing how like you start you know in, in synchronous mode you start uh, doing this doing this rendering work and you do it all the way through your entire app and then you commit to the DOM that's how React used to work in the stack reconciler mode um, in uh, in in the fiber reconciler we're breaking it up every however however long you want uh, the the, way, the reason you use uh, request out of callback is because based on your device on your mobile phone or something you might want something less than 60 frames per second but uh, the whole idea is that whatever the window is you're you're doing your work within the window you yield back to the browser let the browser do its thing and then and then you continue doing your work and only after you're done doing the whole thing then you then you commit same same principle in both cases but here you're chopping out the work. Right, and it makes it makes your app a lot more responsive. Uh, this isn't just theoretical. Uh, you can actually implement uh, toggle your app back and forth. Be, uh, an expensive app, take uh, take something that's that's uh, kind of you know uh, chunky and, and, and laggy. Um, 
if the rendering is if the rendering is super expensive, you can actually see it in your dev tools. If you turn on um, concurrent mode, and you can see it chopping up inside of your uh, flame profile or whatever you call it. Is it flame profiling? Is it, yeah, I don't. <laughs> I, uh, honestly, I, I mean, I just, I just don't have this scale of app to, to really test it on. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's absolutely uh, there if you need it. OK, so that's time slicing. Um, now let's actually talk about a hook. Um, because you know, and some interactivity is needed. Uh, and the way, the way we're going to implement the hook is just another function. So I'm just going to implement, I'm just going to paste in this, this function. Uh, this one is, is, most, uh, is most related to the one I, to, 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 the, to the talk I did previously, the, the previous time I came here. Um, and basically, it's a function that replicates the hook API, right? So uh, you have a set state, uh, and then you have a uh, hook.state over here. Uh, and then you return, that, you return that as an object. So as a consumer, you just call your use state and, and, and get, this, get this out. Um, the, the primary thing, what is this linting error? OK. <laughs> um, ah, oh, uh, another bonus point. Anyone knows what this is? Optional chaining, yeah. So I, I'm using this just because it's, it's, it's in the standard now. So we can all use it and with, uh, with abandon. <laughs> um, it just it just makes your, your code a lot nicer. Like I just have to I would have to do a lot of n n in there. Uh, okay, so uh, the the main thing we the main thing, the main thing we should take we should take note of is inside of this set state thing, which is exactly right. Uh, whoever whoever that was who helped me out just now. Um, in order to set state, we're not calling like some React dot render again. Re React render is running already. There's an infinite loop. Instead, we're just chucking something on to the work in progress route and 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 then put it into the next unit of work and let React pick it up. Whenever it's whenever it's ready, um, and that's how you schedule uh, a set state. You're not, uh, and this is the primary thing why React is not reactive. It's not re React is not reacting to your user input. You're only scheduling and a state update, right? And that's why everything is async there. Um, so a lot of a lot of beginners will will trip up on, on that um, over, um, if they if they, you know, if they're not careful. Okay, so. <clears throat> Uh, so let's actually use use state in our in our app. Uh, I think I have a basic little app prepared. Uh, okay, basic app here, and then I'm going to delete the old app. Um, again, I screwed something up. Uh, let's see what let's see what I screwed up. Ah, okay, and then I need to expose it to on on the React uh, object over here. Um, okay, yay! <laughs> nice. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I always do this. So every every one of my talks, I'm always creating a framework from scratch, and then I always end at like, hey, let's do a clicker, and then everyone claps, and then I go home. Um, but <laughs> but uh, let's do something more ambitious, right? Like so. So now we've proven that this looks exactly like a normal React app that you write on a day-to-day -day basis, and we've cloned every single thing from the bottom up. Um, and so far, we've only taken 120 lines of code. That's good, not good enough. Um, let's keep going. So, oh, uh, React is also changing in terms of the, its render API, right? So uh, we actually haven't even written the render function. I'm, I'm actually a little bit apologetic about that. Um, yeah, so we have, this, we have this work in progress root function over here. Uh, it's not very nice. We should actually have something nicer. We should, we, the, the way that we really want to write our apps is using this render, like React DOM dot render or something, right? Uh, render element container, whatever. Um, so let's see. We have a we have a render function here, um, and so so we're we're just taking this work in progress root thing and we're just sticking it inside of a function, uh, and then and then we'll call render element uh, container. Uh, let's actually put it next to each other like that. Um, so same deal. It's just that now we have a function uh, to do this, so we don't see the ugly part. And again. Uh, this is the kind of code that we write, right? Ren React DOM dot render element in a container. Yeah. Okay. Um, but in concurrent React, we're actually changing that API a little bit to a, to a create root API because you can have multiple roots. Um, so uh, the, the the API is, is pretty is pretty it's just like a small difference. So I'm just going to say create root, change this to create root. Uh, it takes the container um, and it returns an object with a uh, with a render method, uh, which has that element in, in there. And then I'm going to cut this piece here. And now I can say create root uh, dot container and, and an element again. Um, I, think that, I think that should work. Did I screw that up again? <laughs> 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 
Huh? Oh, yeah, good point. <laughs> this is so much worse than last time. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That works. Thank you very much. Um, in fact, I'm going to expose it on the on the React uh, object as well. Um, okay. So, yeah. So that's that's the that's the create root API. It's it's slightly different just because they wanted uh, you to have more options uh, when you're creating roots. Um, but just don't worry about that. Just you know, when you move to con concurrent mode, uh, this is the kind of thing that you need to to, to take note of. Very very small changes. Um, okay, so the, in the last bit, we're going to talk a little bit about Suspense, uh, because at, at this point, we have a fully functioning React clone. Um, and we'll, we'll just talk a little bit about how you can take this mental model and tweak it to understand new things that are coming up. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to um, extract everything that we've done so far into uh, a, a standalone file, because this is getting a bit long. Uh, and we're going to call it react.js, because why not? Um, okay, I'm going to cut, paste. Uh, take this as well, and paste over here, and export here. Uh, hopefully that, like, oh, I need to take this as well. Uh, okay, that looks like it. I got everything. And then I can import React from React.js, whatever. Uh, let's see it work. Ah, where did my thing go? Where did it, wait, does anyone know code sandbox well enough to view? Uh, wait, where is it? Where did it go? Toggle preview. <laughs> where did it go? Do I just refresh? Okay, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna save it and I'm gonna refresh it. When in doubt, just restart. <laughs> of course, right? <laughs> um, okay, so so but like now it's very very convincing. Now like it's like very scary how close it looks. Look at this. It's pretty nuts. Okay, so let's talk about suspense. So uh, okay, okay, I, I, I'm gonna poll the audience again. Um, who here has at least has an inkling of what suspense is? Has tried out suspense? Nobody. Okay, uh, about about like five people. Um, Okay, so suspense is a way. So, how do you fetch state in in a hooks world? You have to, you have to. Sorry, how do you fetch data in a hooks world? Right? There's no component did mount or something, or, or I mean, you can do you can do event handlers for sure. But um, you, typically, you have to like stick it inside of a React dot use effect, um, and then maybe you need a ref or you need to memoize or you do some other uh, BS to, to like to actually do that async effect and then resolve it in a set state. Yeah. Uh, so those of you who, who are who are familiar with hooks and familiar with like doing any sort of like the, the equivalent of this would be a, a event handler or a component in mount or some sort of lifecycle in the, in the class uh, React class component uh, world. Um, React suspense is a more declarative way. This is very imperative. Like do this, then do this, then do this. React the suspense is more declarative way of uh, saying here's a resource and then go fetch it and React will figure out the promise resolution for you. Um, so the 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 whole idea would be would be something like this. Um, so I, ha I have here a, a, an API um, <coughs> that basically uh, fetches uh, from, a, from a serverless function. I work in Nellify, so I set up this function by myself. Uh, and basically, uh, actually, I can just show you um, what it does, because last time I didn't do that, and people were kind of lost. Uh, this function only does one thing, which is uh, you give it a number, and it gives you a number of images back. right? So I, I have here one, two, okay, three. Okay, four. So like basically a very very simple API. Right? You're just like uh, toggling the query param, and it gives you a different response back. Okay. Um, so over here, uh, what it so that's a that's a simple fetcher function, and then it, and then it does some post processing. Doesn't not not really important. But what happens? What's what's important is over here. Um, the way that React wants you to work with suspense is it it's it um, you you wrap it in a resource, and this is kind of this is kind of how it does. So uh, you pass it a you pass it a, a promise to resolve. Um, and then it tracks whether it's resolved or, or it's, uh, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's been resolved with a success or resolved with an error, or it's still pending. If it's still pending, it's, it's going to show, you, it's going to tell React so that it's, uh, it doesn't transition the whole thing yet. Okay, so um, and then and then we'll wrap it in this create resource API. That's just something that's standard if you go look at the the, the docs for React suspense. Okay, so um, we're going to import that. I think we can get rid of this. Um, 
So where is my dog app? Okay. Um, I think this works. Oh, this doesn't work. Okay. So why? Because um, the way the main way that so so you can see that it's it's actually very simple to to we're just creating a resource from our from our API. Remember, it's just wrapping that fetch function, right? And then we're just reading from it. We're not saying like go and fetch and then use effect and then set state or do some of the component this one. You just you're just reading from it as declaratively as you read from uh, hook state, right? And in the in, in in your in your code, you can just use that as a like a you get you get back an array and then you can do docs.map and then you have you, you map it onto an image just like you would do normal code as though you were reading from memory but you're not reading from memory you're actually doing an api fetch and that's all extracted behind inside inside of there it's just a much simpler api and it, and it manages the transitions well for you as well um, but we haven't implemented react suspense yet that's why nothing's showing up so the 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 goal the last the last part of this talk is about um, how to how to explain that okay so inside of this promise the way that we actually resolve this uh, uh, this promise is we actually throw the promise up. So we we are past a suspender suspender function, and that's the the function is this just this fetch dogs function. Um, <coughs> it, well, it's this is this this suspender function that, that wraps the the promise over here. We passed it we passed it here, and we throw it upwards, and we expect React to catch it and then render it, uh, and then and then resolve it for us. And once it's resolved, it re-renders itself to that uh, to that to that um, sort of resolve uh, state. So in, in order to do that, we need to actually uh, build that functionality into, into React itself. So where are we going to do it over here, right? Um, and for me, I think the, the best way that I figured out how to do it was to catch this perform unit of work. So perform unit of work is where um, everything inside, inside of there is where you're doing your app code, right? So if I add a try catch around this, uh, it should work, which means that any error coming out of this, right? Um, it's either a, a promise or it's not a promise, right? So if type of error, um, actually I, I'm going to use instance of uh, promise. So if the error is is, a, is made from a promise, then resolve it. If not, ah, okay, I just locked myself into an infinite loop. Ah, <laughs> uh, it's it's, uh, it's choking a little bit. Okay, stop. How do I how do I how do I kill this? <laughs> it's not saved. <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. This is the fun of live coding. I mean, honestly, like, honestly, we're covering less content as we live code. But uh, yes, that is that's probably uh, what a smarter person than me would do. Uh, uh, Right. Okay. Here. Uh, <laughs> so, so we don't need syntax. Syntax highlighting is fine. Um, but we just say like if if it's an if it's a promise, we'll have a we'll we'll we'll, we'll say like uh, error dot then uh, then we'll actually resolve it by uh, by doing some some other work. I don't think we actually need to do anything else apart from that. But uh, and then if it's if it's not a, if it's if it's if it's not a promise, we'll just actually rethrow the error. Right. Uh, you just like. Keep throwing it up. I just just say it's not your not your tighty. Um, okay, so over here, I think we are done. Uh huh. Did I screw something up? Oh. Yay. Okay. Yay. So we're fetching uh, dogs from the API. Um, uh, oh. Uh, except that I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not setting state properly. So, so over here, once, once, so once the promise has resolved, we actually need to tell React to, to reschedule again. And we already know how to do that, right? We actually can, um, we actually, we actually, we, we did the same thing in, uh, in the use state hook by just setting the work in progress route and the next, next unit of work. So, uh, I think I can just do that uh, by saying next unit. I'm, uh, this is again, this is not like the the by the book proper way to do it, uh, but you're just scheduling another. Uh, round of rendering again. Um, so once once this once this res resolving is done, um, I, I think uh, please show up. <laughs> um, I actually so so work in progress route is also cleared. So I'm also going to do this. Uh, uh huh. There, where is it? Because uh, uh, work in progress route will be will be uh, will be run into as null. Um, 
<laughs> Look, <laughs> can I can I kill this somehow? Pretend it pretend it's not there. Ah. Uh, okay. Um, I thought I, I think I'm, I think I I think I did. Okay. Um, so I, I do have a I do have a backup. Don't worry. Um, this this is for precisely this reason. Uh, suspense work loop. Okay, let's let's actually look at what my code was supposed to do. Uh, <laughs> ah, okay. Oh, I, right, 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 right. Okay, so, so, uh, uh, sorry about that. Okay, so um, I was I was when when you when you actually when you actually have an error and you throw right, you're supposed to suspend the work. So I actually introduced a variable over here to to keep that suspended work. So I'll, I'll just say like while I'm resolving this, like choke first, and then <laughs> and then uh, and then go and resolve it. Once it's resolved, then you dot then on, on the promise, right? And then and then you and then you schedule that new new uh, new new round of work to be done, and you you set the, the suspended work back to the next unit of work again. So it continues rendering where it left off, right? It's the whole pause and resume process again, just it, it's, it's, which is a very fundamental part of uh, fiber. Um, and now I'm screwed. <laughs> uh, okay, okay, all right. So, but but you get the idea uh, that that we were able to modify, like once you have a good mental model, you know exactly where to go to, 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 to implement new features, to understand new features, even though this is, not, this is nothing like the real code, right? Um, but you understand the, the real features so that when you actually write apps like this, you understand fully what's going on under the hood and you're a better user of React for, for that. Um, okay, so uh, I'm just going to leave off with what else we, didn't, what else we covered and what, what we did not cover. So we covered today uh, fiber, link list traversal, uh, render versus commit, use state hook, the work loop, time slicing, and with a lot of difficulty, some suspense. Um, but but you get the idea that this is all doable by hu by mortal human beings like like you and me. Um, and but there's also other stuff. The, the, like th there's always this question of like, okay, if you can write all that by yourself, why use React? Uh, and it's all this stuff, right? Um, so the stuff that you like, if you wanted to, you can keep cloning, but you you probably just end up with the React code base itself. Um, so, uh, so be, feel free to be my guest. Uh, one of the new hooks uh, with suspense that, that, that sort of tap into the suspense um, state uh, at, at, uh, and the scheduler un underlying this whole thing, because React doesn't actually use React request idle callback. It uses a scheduler, scheduler library that um, is meant to be shared with other libraries. Um, and so this, these are ways to tap into the scheduler function um, uh, alongside with the regular hooks that you, already, you should already know. Um, so yeah, this, this, this is all that, this is what's missing in React, this is what's in React that is missing from this talk, but hopefully you get a better understanding of the mental model. Uh, and thanks very much. <laughs> okay, we'll take questions. Questions? Okay. Uh, the way RK takes questions is we pass, pass around floppy. <laughs> uh, okay. Where's the, where's the light? Uh, press class. Us too. Uh, can you can please go back to the uh, the code uh, where we have the suspense, like uh, yeah, suspended work. So uh, I'm just wondering what happens if, let's say, uh, suspended work got expired uh, because something else happened during the time period. And then you resume the work. Would that, would there be any conflict or? Yeah. Uh, so the official answer is that there is actually a queue of effects, and React will always is think of it exactly like Git. Um, when there's when there's a when there's like a, a Git commit and, and one after the other, uh, React will apply, always apply them in order. So while while there's suspense going on and there's and there's work to be done, it will not commit to the DOM. It will just hold that. That uh, state update that you that you scheduled um, in in memory, or, or let's say it's, let's say it's a higher priority, it'll actually, it'll actually render that first, and then it'll um, um, it'll, it'll resolve that promise, and then and then re-render with with um, with the with the work that we that we did over there. Um, so it's always in sequence, um, and uh, and it will show on. So React has a has an idea of what the queue is, and React will and, and but what shows on screen is based on priority. So there's a there's a concept of a priority queue like. Uh, there's five different levels of, of priority in React. So uh, if there's something that's high priority, that will show, that will flush the screen first. But when you apply something lower priority and that gets resolved, that will be, resol be the, your whole app will be rerun again, the whole thing, 
Um, and then, you'll, and then the, the final output will be uh, flushed to the screen as well. So whatever conflicts, like the whole model of React is meant to be declarative. Like everything is declarative here, right? And, and that's why it's so much easier to think about because uh, when in doubt, just rerun again. So once you have that, that two conflicting, I, I mean, it's not conflicting. It's like, it's just different, st different states that are, that are being set, right? And you don't know how they resolve it towards the end. So just rerun the whole render again. Which is why, like, um, one of the reasons for moving to hooks and away from class, the class-based um, lifecycle model is because they don't want to promise you that, like, we'll only run component did mount once. They don't want you to do that. They, they, they may rerun, they may stop rerun or just re-render again because something else up the, up the tree um, updated um, multiple times, uh, and, and you may not be in control inside of the component. So they don't want you to, to tie it to the component instance uh, that much. I just make sure, just to make sure I understand it correctly. So yeah. you're saying that let's say we click to get a doc picture and it's fetching, and the user decided to, to switch to another tab maybe. And uh, showing the, the is higher. Let's assume it's higher priority. The switching of the tab. Yes. Yeah. The switching of the tab. And yep. then you show the React will 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 commit the work and the, to the screen that uh, displaying another tab. And after displaying that tab, the top picture arrives. So the just one show. One show on screen. Will, will, React will actually rerun re-render the whole thing to make sure that everything is correct. Yes. So. If you think about what happened in sequence, is you you sent the fetch, right, and then and then you you sent the uh, the the, sw the switching of the tab. But over over on the on the rendering side, um, we, like the switching of the tab will always take priority because that's a more that's a high level visual element. So nothing. So the the dog fish the the dog promise because promise are not cancelable normally. Um, that will still resolve, but it just won't show up. It won't show up. Okay. Right. Because you already like the, the more important thing is that every single time I'm re-rendering the app from scratch, and you said, and over here there's a router that says like, okay, tab two now. And I only show tab two, so the tab one with the image doesn't show. It is, yeah, it is uh, not shown, but um, the promise will still resolve. Yeah, it seems I already registered the, the resolving, but still it will trigger a react to at least do something. Or no, ignored. yeah, it will just be not. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Good question. Yeah, so we have a very simple cache over here. Um, where? Are? <laughs> uh, so the cache is just uh, this this arc. So this is a like a last whatever was last called is the is is the cache thing. So it's like a what do you call it? Memoize one yeah. effect. Um, so I just store it inside a current arg if current arg is is uh, is if the current arg is is different then i'm just invalidating that cache and going fetch the other one oh, yeah. but obviously you can have you know a deeper cache than that um, in fact I, I think there's an interesting case to be made to put this cache inside of service workers uh, yeah cuz then then your app just loads instantly right with all the cache that you've done before actually, my question is that actually this one should work in current react version right now the only one missing is that uh, good implementation of a cache, right? Yes. Yeah. So, so if you try something like this uh, in any production application, because I don't dare to. Yeah. Well. So uh, right now, right now the the status is that uh, it's still experimental. So if you go uh, React JS dot org slash concurrent, um, it's still experimental. So they have not pushed it and they have not sort of marked it as uh, production ready for most people. Uh, but they have been using it in production at Facebook for a year. Um, so it's up to you what you want to do. Uh, I remember that uh, one and a half years ago when I first uh, listened to the talk from Jan in, actually in the React Island or something, right? Yeah. They introduced that and they promised that, okay, this one will be the future. And, and actually, it's one month and one year and eight months already since that day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I gave up that year. So, so the, the main thing, um, the, the, the interesting thing is that. Uh, I mean, you know, who among us has not estimated and then been way off? Like, so I, would, I don't knock them for that at all. Um, the, the main thing that they're, like, what I presented to you is entirely client-side. Um, and the main thing they're focused on is actually the server-side story. How do you server fetch uh, and then and, and stream it down to the, the user and hydrate uh, in, a, in an intelligent fashion that doesn't screw up your state? 
Um, so, so that's uh, they've been working on that. Uh, in, in fact, probably more than the the rest of these details. Like they could probably bang this out if they want to, but it's not. It doesn't matter if if the server side rendering story is not fleshed out for them. Uh, I have a. I mean, I even show this to you. Like this, you cannot do. Like uh, so he so he just um, so Dan just tweeted this out recently. Um, so this is, a, this, is, this is hydration. So uh, people, uh, hopefully people know about server-side rendering. Like you render on a server, you send HTML, and then you send the JS, and then you hydrate into a full SPA. Yeah? OK, so uh, over here, this is, this is the, the, the idea for suspense-enabled hydration, right? <laughs> where you're, where you're, there's no JS loaded, so you, whatever, in, whatever buttons you have, HTML you have is not interactive. And then you manually load the JS, and that just immediately gets hydrated with the sequence of, um, of events that you already uh, that you already did. So, and you can chunk your you can chunk your, your JS up so you can load these separately. So if the user never uses your nav or your sidebar or something, it never loads your JS, um, and you only load the, the stuff that is being used. So that's the that's okay. So this is fine, right? This is like okay, impressive, whatever. You can do that in normal JS, but you cannot do this unless you have a, a, a complex enough runtime. So. That thing, that question just now about applying that uh, sequence of events and, and having, having that queue in mind uh, lets you be able to do this. So we're clicking multiple things and click, 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 click. So, so these states might have interaction effects, right? And you don't really know. Like, so, um, so we'll just refuse to show until you load both JSs and then, and then the clicks will be registered on both. So it's like if, if, the, if the required dependencies all down the chain are not resolved yet, we'll just never show, we'll just never show it. But if they're all resolved, then we'll show all at once, and it will be consistent state throughout. That makes sense. So like, the, the whole idea is that you as an app author, you only declare the intentional screens that you want to show, and all the, all the unintentional loading states in between will be managed by React. Not by your, I mean, previously it was, it was managed by your code. You, you will be like, you use like, I don't know, React async or component inbound or uh, React loadable is another very popular library, uh, but this is all now being absorbed into the framework. Uh, I guess one more question, anyone? Um, I'll, I'll, I'll put this on the, on the GitHub thing, uh, but hopefully it doesn't scare people off too much that, like, yeah, I, I messed up the coding, but I, I'm speaking as I code, so a little bit uh, messy, but uh, the, the amount that we just looked at was 133 lines of code today. Nothing, nothing. Um, but hopefully it gives you, like, this is the, the best place to start uh, studying your, for a better mental model of React. Okay, cool. Thank you. <laughs>